Hey everyone, welcome to our way too early 2024 college football predictions video for the Oregon Ducks. So what we're going to do today is we are going to take a look at the 2024 college football schedule for the Oregon Ducks and try to break down which games we think they're going to win, which games we think they're going to lose. There's been a lot of turnover in college football this offseason. A lot of teams are still going through spring practice right now. A lot of guys competing for depth chart spots on the roster. The Oregon Ducks are no different. They had a lot of players leave this past offseason, so they have a lot of fresh blood coming in there, a lot of slots that they have to fill in. This was a team that had a really strong season this past year. They went 11-2, solid team. They had a top 10 offense. They had a top 15 defense. One of the best rounded teams in all of college football. They had the runner-up to the Heisman, Bo Nix. He's now gone. He's off to the NFL draft. They had Troy Franklin. They have Powers Johnson, Bucky Irving, Dolores. A lot of solid players, but all of those guys are gone now. But if there's one thing that Dan Lanning can do, it's bring in fresh talent. No one works recruiting like him. No one works the transfer portal like him. He's top 10 in recruiting every single year, top 5 in the portal every single year. So those guys that are out, he's brought in flesh players now. Namely, the main people that he's brought in is he's brought in two of the top five transfer portal quarterbacks led by Dylan Gabriel to transfer from the Oklahoma Sooners. If you don't know who Dylan Gabriel is for some reason, you're definitely going to find out this college football season. He was at UCF, transferred to Oklahoma, could have definitely been invited to the Heisman last year if he stays healthy this year. He's definitely probably going to get invited this season with the Ducks. He can throw it. He can scramble. He can run. He's the perfect player to fill in in this offensive scheme for Bo Nix. I don't think you're going to see much of a step back on the offensive side, if any. They might actually get better because he's going to be scrambling and running a lot. There's not going to be a letdown. They'll pick up right where they left off last year. And I actually think their defense is going to be even better this season. They brought in a lot of fresh talent on the D-line. They were good last year. They're going to be even better this year. But let's go ahead and take a look at their schedule. Go ahead, hit that like button and subscribe. And let's get things started here. So with the Oregon Ducks 2024 schedule, they kick things off Saturday, August 31st versus the Idaho Vandals. Now, this is actually a pretty decent team, but they in no way have the level of talent that the Oregon Ducks have. This is a really good game for them to kind of test their fresh roster, their fresh starters, and to kind of get some reps under their belt, basically, before they get into Big Ten play. That's one other big thing is obviously Pac-12 has been dissolved. Oregon, Washington, USC, and the Bruins are now in the Big Ten. So their regular season schedule is about to get a lot more difficult Big Ten has the reigning college football champs, really tough conference, Wisconsin, Penn State, Michigan, Buckeyes, a lot of talent there, but Oregon's built for it. They need the reps before they get into conference play, working with their new scheme, with their new players, and that's what Idaho gives them. Oregon's going to win this game big, probably like a 62-7 type game, but they'll be starting out the year 1-0. and Then the next game they have, week two. Boise State Broncos. Now, this is kind of an older matchup. These teams have met a couple times over the last couple of decades. Was always a fun game to watch because Boise State wasn't in one of the Power Five conferences, but they were obviously having some undefeated seasons there a long time ago. And the Ducks are one of the only teams that would actually play them during the regular season. No one else wanted to play them because no one else wanted to take the chance of losing to Boise State. But this is a fun matchup. So, Oregon is actually keeping their out-of-conference schedule pretty difficult. A lot of teams don't like to play Boise during the regular season because if you're going to play an out-of-conference team, a non-Power 5 team, you usually pick a scrub. But Oregon actually picked a pretty decent team who had a really good end to the season last year. They had a first-time head coach filling in last season. They have a transfer quarterback coming in. He's going to light things up. This is a talented team with a solid defense. They're going to score points. So it's definitely not a pushover game. Look for Boise State to try to keep this game close first half. But Oregon's too good, too fast. They're too good in the trenches on both sides of the ball. Look for Boise State to win this one. They're probably going to win it. I'd say like a 50 to 17 maybe. But it'll be a solid win. Um, and they'll move to 2 and 0. Oh. The next game that we're looking at is the Oregon State Beavers here. So we have our Civil War matchup. We have Oregon, Oregon State. Even though the Pac-12 is dissolved, these teams have agreed 
to continue to play out of conference every single season. Again, Oregon keeping their out of conference schedule tough. Playing a rival out of conference, props to both teams for keeping this game scheduled. This was a solid game last year, but Oregon State was a completely different team. They lost Smith, they lost DJU, they're losing Martinez at running backs. This team is going to be completely different. They don't even have a home because the Pac-12 has been dissolved. Look for Oregon to push their weight around. They are hands down the better team. Oregon's going to run it up big time here. I could see them winning probably like a 58-13. So they'll be 3-0. and Next game we're looking at is an old Pac-12 matchup, but now a Big Ten matchup. The UCLA Bruins. They lost their quarterbacks. They lost Chip Kelly. He's now the offensive coordinator for Ohio State. Completely left the team. They're completely rebounding, and Oregon stole Dante Moore from them. He's going to now be the backup with the Ducks. So it's it's personal for him, but he's not going to be playing unless it's in garbage time. UCLA. They usually have had a pretty tough defense for the last few years. Complete turnover here. A lot of guys transferred out. Chip Kelly gone. They also just don't have the talent. So Oregon's getting a couple pretty easy matchups starting things out. Oregon's going to dominate this game from the moment the game starts. Look for them to win probably a, I'd say about a 38 to 13 game. But they're now 4 and 0. Oh. Next game, week 6, we have the Michigan State Spartans. Michigan State is also one of those teams that's in rebuilding mode. They fired their coach. They brought in Smith from Oregon State. They have transfers coming in. This is a pretty, you know, um, bad roster, but Michigan State's rebuilding. Give them some time. Give Smith time to rebuild the roster. They're not going to have the depth, even though they have a five-star quarterback coming in. Where's the weapons on the O-line, running back, wide receiver, tight end? Where's the defensive weapons? Give them some time to rebuild the roster and right this ship here. Oregon's going to control this game, even with Jonathan Thin Smith. Like I said, just give him a couple of years to flip the roster. But Oregon is also going to dominate this game, moving to 5-0. and They're going to get the win. They're probably going to win this one, I say pretty convincingly, maybe like a 40 two to 17 type win but Oregon will be five and oh next game one of the best matchups of the season this is probably going to be a top five matchup so you're going to have undefeated Oregon versus more than likely undefeated Ohio State Buckeyes will probably be sitting around one to three at this point maybe Oregon around four to five but it's going to be a big matchup because if anyone has the talent in the Big Ten to match Oregon at every single skill position it's going to be the Buckeyes. Buckeyes have a top three roster in all of college football. It's not even close. They had a defense returning eight starters from last year. Last year, they gave up 11.1 points per game. This was a top three defense for most of the year. They were number one. They're solid. They get sacks. They get pressures. It's hard to throw on them. They have so many offensive weapons. They also added Quinchin Junkins at the running back position. They have Ryan Day. They have Levitt. They have Chip Kelly now calling offensive plays. This team's going to be stacked. They're going to be throwing it, running it. They're going to be moving quick. They're going to be a lot better than they were with Kyle McCord at the running back position. Um, so this is going to be a tough matchup here. Oregon is going to be running hot right now. They're going to have, a, like I said, a top 10 defense, top 10 offense. But you're running into another stacked team who could match you blow for blow. This game could go either way. This game is basically a 50-50 game. I would not be surprised whoever wins this. Whoever wins this could also easily have a rematch in the Big Ten Championship. It's hard to beat a good team twice in one season. So whoever loses this game, I honestly think would actually be the favorite in the Big Ten Championship to win the rematch. And heck, these teams could play a third time in the playoffs. 12 teams get in the playoffs now. So it could conceivably go on the whole year. But I'm actually going to go out there. I'm going to go with Ohio State getting the win in the first matchup. I It's going to be a really close game. We'll probably go down to the final possession. I'm going to say like a 27 to 24. A very close game. Anyone's game. I have the Buckeyes squeaking out with the win. Oregon moving to 5-1. and one. But like I said, if they rematch in the Big Ten Championship, I wouldn't be surprised if whoever loses this matchup wins that game. Because it's hard to beat a good team twice in one year. But Oregon's 5-1, and one, still a top 10 team, still everything in front of them with 12 teams getting in the playoffs now. 
Next week eight, we have the Purdue Boilermakers. Oregon's licking their wounds from that really close loss. They're going to be out for blood. Everything's still in front of them here, but they want to right the ship. They want to make up for that loss. So they're going to bludgeon Purdue. They're going to put it on them. Purdue had a first year coach last season, you know, but they weren't really good at anything. They weren't good at offense. They weren't good at defense. Look for Oregon to just pummel them here. I'm going to say they win this game like a 52 to 6 score, and they move to 6 and 1. After that, we have the Illinois Fighting Illini. This is a team that had a really good defense two years ago, completely fell off the rails last year. They couldn't move the ball. They couldn't stop anyone. Oregon still wanting to right the wrongs for that really close loss. They're going to be out for revenge. They're going to want to steamroll through the Big Ten. Look for Oregon to follow that up with another win here. Move to 7-1, and one, and they're going to win pretty convincingly. Probably a 48-10 to 10 type win. After that... We have Week 10 Michigan Wolverines. This is another Big Ten matchup here. Oregon's playing a lot of really good defenses this year. Michigan obviously had the number one or two defense last season. You know, they set a lot of records. They get after people. They're the defending national champions, but they've had a lot of turnover. They're still bringing back a lot of their defensive stars, but they're only bringing back three players on offense J.J. McCarthy is gone. Harbaugh's gone. He's bringing his defensive coordinator with him to the NFL. So Sherrod Brown is now the head coach for Michigan. He was the offensive coordinator previously. A lot of people think he's a little bit too conservative of an offensive coordinator. But when he filled in for Harbaugh during those suspensions, they did win every single game. I think he was 3-0 and for the games that he was filling in for. So he knows how to coach. He knows how to coach in big games. I don't foresee Michigan taking too much of a step back, but I do think there will be a step back. Big Ten's really tough. They will still be good, but they had so many players leave. Not that many left in the transfer portal, but Michigan really doesn't work the transfer portal too much. They like to develop players that they recruit out of high school. I could see them having like a nine or three season. Really strong season given their schedule, but just not matching what they did last year. But that's to be expected when basically your entire team is going to the NFL draft. But this is going to be a tough game because Michigan likes to control the clock. They like to move slow, run the ball downhill, drain the clock, keep the ball out of Oregon's offense's hands. They're going to put a lot of pressure on Oregon's D-line here. And they have a really good defense that's going to try to control Oregon and force them to go vertical. But I have Oregon winning a really close one here. I could see this game being a 31-28 to matchup. Oregon barely squeaking by, but a really strong win and still a really good loss for Michigan. But Oregon will be 8-1. and one. Next game we have is going to be versus the Maryland Terrafins. And this game is going to be on Saturday, November 9th. Maryland's one of those teams, obviously, they lost to Availoa brother, uh, Tulia to, to Availoa. So they're rebuilding. Uh, they've had some pretty decent seasons. They're always like a 7-5 to five or 8-4 and four team during the regular season. But they're rebuilding at the most important position. They lost a lot of skilled position players. They weren't very good to begin with. They're definitely not going to be able to match Oregon's firepower. Look for Oregon to get the win here. They'll probably win, I could see, like a 45-20 to 20 maybe. And they'll move to 9-1, and one, having a really strong season still. Our next matchup is going to be the Wisconsin Badgers on Saturday, November 16th. Wisconsin, Luke Fickle. They have a new quarterback coming in. They have Tyler Van Dyke transferring over from Miami. They still have Phil Longo. They have the running back position on lockdown. They had two good running backs last season. They lost one to the NFL. Still a really good roster. They're going to have a good defense. The issue is can Phil Longo get Tyler Van Dyke's issues worked out to where he's not throwing picks every fifth path? If they can... Wisconsin's a very solid team. Fickle's a very good coach. He real built Cincinnati really quick. It's just going to take a couple of years because Wisconsin's cupboard was kind of empty when he came in outside of the running back position. He had, but they had a solid defense last season. They just couldn't score at all. Look for Wisconsin to be better this year. I can see them being an eight and four team making solid steps going forward. So Oregon definitely cannot overlook Wisconsin because they can sneak up and they can beat you. So I think they'll try to keep this game close, but I have Oregon getting the win still. Probably close at halftime, maybe even Oregon's down, but they'll control the second half. They'll get a couple scores in the third and fourth quarter to pull away. I have Oregon winning probably a 31-21 to type game. Close 
for about two to three quarters, and then Oregon out physicals them at the very end. Solid win versus a really solid Wisconsin team. So Oregon's now 10 and 1. After that, we're going to have another Pac 12 matchup, and this is actually the final game of the regular season Saturday, November 30th. We have the Washington Huskies. This is going to be in Oregon. Obviously, we all know Washington. They had a really solid team this past season. They lost everyone. They lost Odunze. They lost their quarterback. They lost their coach. Everybody left. Quarterback to the NFL, coach to Alabama, and now they're bringing in Jed Fish as the new coach out of Arizona. But the cover's been completely drained. Everyone that stayed transferred out. They do have Will Rogers, the transfer quarterback out of Mississippi State. But how's it going to work? All of your skilled position players are gone. All of your defensive players are are gone or transferred out. A complete rebuild. So this team is not going to be what they were last season. They'll probably still be a decent team, but the Big Ten's pretty rough. Washington's probably a 7-5-ish team right now. You know, that's just me thinking off the top of my head. Still having a solid season, but it's not their fault. They have to completely rebuild the roster. Oregon, they want to get this win. They lost to Washington twice last year. They want to get it. This is their chance. Washington's down, so they're going to try to kick them while they're down. Look for Oregon to get the win here. I'm going to say like a 42 to 20 game. Solid win. Finishing the regular season 11 and 1. That puts them in line for the playoffs. But it also probably puts them in line for the Big Ten Championship. So we're probably, potentially, going to have a rematch. Ohio State versus Oregon. Even if Oregon loses both matchups somehow. And they finish the season 11 and 2. They're probably still getting in the college football playoffs. So it really doesn't matter. But obviously, when you're fighting for seeding, you want to win the conference so you get a bye week. But I have Oregon finishing the regular season 11 and 1 with the potential to have the Big Ten Championship game and finish 12 and 1, get that bye week. And maybe this is the year they get back to the national championship. But really strong season for Dan Lanning and the Oregon Ducks. That's my breakdown of the way too early Oregon Ducks prediction video. Hit that like button and subscribe if you have any comments. Drop them below and I'll make sure to respond. Thanks.